that part. And now this will start counting. Okay. And that's it. Okay. We got through that part okay the yep. first time, but it was the ending, so I'll come back with you when we turn it yeah. off. Okay. You want this? No, no,
Julie, thank you for lifting that up. Let us, oh, Melanie. one last thing. Okay. I have some things that were left over from the meal yesterday in my car. So uh, if you're here, um, I'd be happy to give those to you to take home. And uh, also you can talk about if there are cookies or bars that you donated. I have those if you want to take them home. Or if you don't, I thought we could maybe use them for the community meal. Okay. This was the dozer hip for the And that's a, like a, the polar. It's an annual hip. Yeah. Okay. It's in memory of a young fellow that passed away on his junior year of high school. So that's helpful for me. Yeah. So um, that's wonderful that the community gets behind that. And 120 yeah. brave souls. Yeah, and it was cold. <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, this and is an interesting winter to do that. So I'll wait until the warmer weather to go take this yeah. Thank you. Anything else? These are wonderful joys uh, and opportunities for us in our ministry and community. Um, let us worship God this day.
Through Christ, we are signs of your loving and healing presence in the world. Yet we confess that we sometimes hurt people through our cry, rather than showing the way to the healing waters of your spirit. We are discouraged ourselves. We are not able to be signs of love, hope, and healing. Forgive us and give us grace to be mercifully reminders of who we are in our daily lives. Amen. Christ, in whose heart is both welcome and warning, say to us, do to us, reveal within us the things that will make us whole. Brothers and sisters in Christ, hear this good news. Who is in a position to condemn? Only Christ. Christ came for us. Christ lived for us. Christ died for us. Christ rose again in power for us. Scriptures declare that if any person be in Christ, that person becomes a whole new being. The old is dead and gone, and in Christ all things, all people, are made new. Thanks be to God for this good news of the gospel. Amen. Sometimes at holidays? Do you, do you ever have a, a regular prayer? 
prayer, you pray like at uh, the, the table, like the yeah. meal. What do you pray? What's your prayer? Yeah, do you have one of those, a bedtime prayer? Yeah. Do you have a standard one that you use? Now I lay me down to sleep. No. No? Just, you just pray. There's different things. So does anybody have one? Like at meal, God is great, God is good. So, no? So what do you think Jesus prayed? All the time. You think all the time? That, I, I wonder if he did. When he got older, we know he prayed a lot. He went off to pray. And we're going to talk about that today. Because at one point, when he was off praying and the disciples saw him, they wanted to learn to pray. Have you ever wanted to learn to pray? No. No? <laughs> no. So maybe before a test. Maybe when you did something wrong. Oh, God, help me. Maybe. I don't know. So, I think Jesus probably prayed a lot. Maybe his parents taught him. But in our scripture that we're going to hear in just a little bit, he's off praying. And the disciples see him. And they've been noticing that he's been praying. And they notice that his cousin, John, who we call John the Baptist, has taught his disciples how to pray. And so, the disciples of Jesus come to him and say, teach us to pray like John taught his disciples to pray. And you know, he taught them. When you pray, say. What do you think he said? Amen. Amen? Maybe. So, do you think that we say that prayer that he taught those disciples every Sunday? <clears throat> what do we call that prayer? Does anybody know? Do you know? Do you know? Does anybody else? Emily? Emily? Grace? Do they have an idea? Anybody want to take a guess? What is it? What are you doing? If I was in school, can you, can you, can you ask the person what's the answer? Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So we're not in school. The Lord's Prayer. Or if you're a Catholic, they call it the Our Father. So, But Jesus said, when you pray, say things like, Our Father, who art in heaven. Have you ever heard that? How would be that name? So we're going to talk about prayer and its meaning. And in the bulletin today, everybody has a copy of some quotes about prayer. What different people think prayer is. And we know the Lord's Prayer. But what about prayer? What is it really? And it's something for us to think about. Because we have bedtime prayers, and we have prayers before a meal, and sometimes we pray when we get in trouble, and we're misbehaving. And sometimes we pray to get out of trouble. We pray a lot of times. So we're going to learn, talk a little bit about that. One thing I want to pray about is uh, a birthday. Tice, is that you? No, That's you. Tice, you're an old man today. <laughs> Eight years old. So, let's, can we sing happy birthday? You know what I do when I work at the high school in McFarland, and at the middle school? And you know what, one of the things I love to do to the high school kids when it was their birthday in the lunchroom? I go up to them because I can't sing. I'd sing as loud and as hockey <laughs> as I could. Happy birthday to them and get people to join in. So why don't we try to sing on key to Tice and happy birthday to him today? Can we do that? No? All right. So, all right. Where are we at? Mayor? You got a good voice. Anybody else? One, two, three. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Sunday school right now, and uh, off you go. Let's have a prayer before you go. <laughs> God, for your love that we've come to know in Jesus, for your love through Jesus that we've experienced through these children, for the prayers we have learned, for the prayer you taught, for all these things we pray in Christ's name. Um, what are we supposed to say? Yeah. <laughs>
responsive prayer for illumination. Let us pray. God, you reach into our lives, not through instruction, but story. Open our hearts to be attentive, that seeing we may perceive, and hearing we may understand, and understanding may act upon your word, that so others may speak to us. Amen. The first reading is taken from Deuteronomy 30, pages 15 to 20 in the Old Testament of your Pew Bible. See, I have set before you today life and prosperity, death and adversity. If you obey the commandments of the Lord your God that I am commanding you today, by loving the Lord your God, walking in his ways, and observing his commandments, decrees, and ordinances, then you shall live and become numerous, and the Lord your God will bless you in the land that you are entering to possess. But if your heart turns away, and you do not hear, but are led astray to bow down to other gods and serve them, I declare to you today that you shall perish. You shall not live long in the land that you are crossing the Jordan to enter and possess. I call heaven and earth to witness against you today that I have set before you life and death, blessings and curses. Choose life so that you and your descendants may live, loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and holding fast to him. For that means life to you and length of days, so that you may live in the land that the Lord swore to give to your ancestors, to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. This ends the first reading. May God's word enlighten our hearts and minds. second reading is taken from the Gospel of Luke. We'll be reading in chapter 11, verse 1 through 13. Together, let us listen to what the Spirit is saying to the people. He was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, When you pray, Say, Father, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, give us each day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, for we forgive, for we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread. For a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. The answer is from within. Do not bother me. The door has already been locked, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give whatever he needs. So I say to you, ask, and it will be given you. Search, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds. And for everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will the Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? For the Word of God in Scripture, for the Word of God among us, for the Word of God within us, we give Amen. thanks to God. I 
professor in seminary, Eugene March, who uh, was from Texas uh, and taught at Austin Presbyterian Seminary and came from there to Louisville to seminary and was telling us a story as Gene March was known to do in classes and one of them was about a colleague of his who was asked to pray at a football game in Texas which is like religion down there and so his colleague went to pray and when it was time for the prayer his colleague said Lord we didn't come here to pray Amen <laughs> I thought about that a few years ago when I was working in study hall. I was hired as the study hall teacher at McFarland High School. Uh, I've checked that off my bucket list. <laughs> An interesting place. Anyhow, one morning while I was making my rounds, checking in with the students to see what homework they had, there was a group of the hockey players who were sitting there talking about something, and they called me over and said, you know, we almost called you last night, M. Dubs. I was like, why would you have called me? Well, we know you're a minister, and before our game, we were wondering about saying the Lord's Prayer, but none of us could remember how to pray it. And we thought you could help us. Teach us to pray. I'm not sure they really came there to pray, but I thought it was interesting that they at least were thinking about prayer. I wouldn't be the first person that uh, a student, a disciple, I wouldn't call my study hall students really disciples of me, who went to a teacher and said, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus praying, and when he's finished, a disciple comes and says, can you teach us to pray like John taught his disciples to pray? And Jesus says, yes. So when you pray, say. When you pray. As I asked the children, who taught you to pray? Do you remember maybe the first time you ever prayed as a child? Was it one of those generic mealtime prayers that we say, God is great, God is good? Was it a bedtime prayer, now I lay me down to sleep? Those are part of our rituals that we learn and learn to pray around, both at mealtime and at bedtime. So I would imagine that we all remember those prayers from our childhood that maybe a parent taught us or a grandparent and that we are handing on to our own children and grandchildren. Do you remember the first time you prayed? Do you remember, maybe, when you first really prayed? I mean, not a liturgical prayer like we say in church, or the Lord's Prayer, which is a very meaningful prayer, as are our liturgies. And those are important prayers. But do you remember a time when you really prayed? Were you driving somewhere behind the wheel of a car? Was it in the lonely nights you, know, you wake up and something's been troubling your heart and mind? Were you sitting in a restaurant somewhere over a meal? Where was it when you really prayed for the first time? I wonder if my hockey players really understood what it meant to pray the Lord's Prayer or any prayer before a sporting event. And I'm not opposed to prayer in those moments. Prayer can come at any time. But what does prayer really mean? Have you ever thought about it? What is prayer? I offered you some of these thoughts today that are in the bulletin. And I wanted you to look at those. I'm prone to quotes. And I think there are so many there that can gravitate towards us and help us understand prayer. I loved Frederick Buechner's first quote. What's prayer? It's shooting shafts into the dark. What mark they strike, if any, who's to say? It's reaching for a hand you cannot touch. The silence is so fabulous. The prayers, like bullets, vanish into the sea. You beg, you whimper, 
You load God down with empty praise. You tell him sins that he already knows full well. You seek to change his changeless will. Yet Godric prays the way he breathes, for else his heart would wither in his breast. Prayer is the wind that faith fills his sail, else drift with witless tides. And sometimes, by God's grace, a prayer is heard. What is prayer? Anne Lamott says, I'll sometimes say to God, you've got to be kidding. Or I say, it would be so much skin off your nose it would be so much skin off your nose to cut this person a little slack. I think you can say anything. You can say, I'm mad at you, and I'm not going to be a good sport about it. How about that? And that's prayer. Silence can be prayer. Rage can be prayer. It's true. It's all prayer. When we are talking to something that the rest of the world may not be seeing right that minute, we're talking about the deepest part of our heart, and we're trying to tell the truth, and that's prayer. I'm not sharing all these. Sister Joan Chittister says that the contemplative does not pray in order to coax satisfaction out of the universe. God is life not a vending machine full of trifles. To fit the whims of the human race, God is the end of life, the fulfillment of life, the essence of life, the coming of life. The contemplative, contemplative prays in order to be open to what is, rather than to reshape the world to their own lesser desires. Mary Oliver, the poet, says, it doesn't have to be the blue iris. It could be weeds in a vacant lot or a few small stones. Just pay attention. Then patch a few words together and don't try to make them elaborate. This isn't a contest, but the doorway into thanks and the silence in which another voice may speak. What is prayer to you? When Jesus was off praying by himself and had finished, the disciples came to him and asked him to teach them to pray. And Jesus said to them, when you pray, I wonder if we're still learning to pray ourselves. invite you to stand with me in one voice, share together in our affirmation of faith, this one taken from a brief statement of faith in the Presbyterian Church. <clears throat> together, in life and in death, we belong to God. We trust in Jesus Christ, the fully human, fully God. Jesus proclaimed the reign of God, preaching the news to the poor, and release to the captives, teaching by word and deed. Blessing the children, healing the sick, binding up the brokenhearted, eating without caste, forgiving sinners, and 
calling all to repent and believe the gospel. Unjustly condemned for blasphemy and sedition, Jesus was crucified, suffering the depths of human pain and giving his life to the sins of the world. God raised Jesus from the dead, vindicating his sinless life, breaking the power of sin and evil, delivering us from death to life eternal. With believers in every time and place, we rejoice in the company of life or in death and separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. sharing of our joys and concerns as a community, um, and uh, mindful uh, today of the, uh, the principal, uh, Bruce Dahman, uh, from Memorial High School, uh, and for all who have experienced that uh, grief as they uh, surround his family and uh, they give thanks uh, for his part in education and the lives he's touched in many ways. Um, so for the, the students and staff of Memorial, for uh, Bruce Dahman, for his uh, ministry through education, um, and for all who grieve, we pray to the Lord. Lord hear our prayer. Are there others today that would like to lift up? I'd okay. like to keep Dan's sister uh, in, in our prayers. She was traveling from Tennessee along to Las Vegas. She was moving by herself, uh, driving, and she had a stroke along the way. So she ended up in the hospital down in Texas, all by herself. And so now her daughter has joined her, and she she's doing better. But we'd like to keep her in a prayer. Ruth. Ruth, and is she still in the hospital? No. Okay. No. Okay. So for uh, Stan's sister Ruth, uh, suffering a stroke in Texas, for all who uh, minister to her in that uh, place of loneliness and, and a place of fear, uh, for God's presence, uh, we pray to the Lord. Are there others today? For our world in which we live, um, for the Olympics, for the gathering of a community uh, in the global aspect, uh, for peace uh, in the midst of conflict and struggle and politics, uh, for all those things, uh, for our local community where there still is hunger and uh, a need for adequate shelter. Mindful of each other in our concerns, we pray these things to the Lord. Let us be together in a time of prayer. Let us pray. Lord, if we ask, or if we knock, or if we beg and plead, in the midst of the noonday sun or in the depths of the night, when we come with prayers of joy and heartfelt thanks, or with anger, furious with you at times for situations that are beyond our control, know you hear our words, our thoughts as prayer. So even as we lift up our prayers this evening, for those like Ruth, traveling, suffering illness, in need of care, for a community like Memorial High School, suffering grief, the loss of their principal. For a world that gathers in a global place in Sochi to be about athletics, even in the midst of politics and in the midst of conflict. For all these places, prayers are being offered and your presence is felt. So 
comfort us, strengthen us, heal us, and give us courage always to be your light and your love. And even as we pray this prayer, we continue to pray the prayer Jesus taught, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. worship as we receive the gifts of our tithes and offerings in response to God's love, we respond now with these gifts.
because for all that God can do within us, and for all that God can do without us, for all in whom Christ lived before us, for all in whom Christ lives beside us, for all the Spirit wants to bring us, for where the Spirit wants to lead us, may God bless you, the Creator working constantly through change, the Christ who came to share and change our lives, and the Spirit moving in the world and changing it. We go out in the world to be not our agents of change, but our Christ's name. Stop button on the